Hello my friends and welcome to Vintage Story. Now on my channel I have about a 30 episode Vintage Story gameplay from way back in the day. And recently I did an episode of Games I Play For Me which featured Vintage Story and I've had some very positive response. So what I've wanted to do is get into a Vintage Story playthrough that is Vintage Story as I play Vintage Story which is to say modded and so we're gonna first look at our mods manager and see what we've got here alpha weapons pack adds in new weapons to the game ancient tools adds in some useful tools from ancient times anvil metal recovery allows us to do just that if we make an anvil and then we upgrade to another anvil we can break down the original one for materials we have at water's edge which is all kinds of new water plants we have bed respawner, which just allows us to set our spawn point to our bed when we sleep in it. Better fire pit keeps temperature standard. Um, for some reason in the vanilla game, in between everything that happens in a fire pit, the temperature drops to zero again, and that just makes no sense. Um, we have reignited, which just allows us to light torches in some extra ways. Carry on allows us to pick up things like chests and baskets and carry them while there's materials in them. We have cats that are tameable. We have a death waypoint marker. We have braziers for light and warmth in the winter. Vines drop anyway just means that if there's vines on a tree and we chop the tree, the vines fall as well as the sticks and wood. Extended crafts, which gives us some creative recipes like... Uh, um, paper lanterns and stuff like that fancy sky just makes the sky look nicer no more square sun and moon feverstone wilds adds a bunch of creatures in including some uh, mystical creatures like fawns and um, golems we have hanging oil lamps it's just a standard oil lamp can now be attached to the bottom of a block um, healing while sleeping fixes health regeneration not popular properly being boosted while sleeping we've got a hud clock to keep track of time and temperature we've got the joy of sailing which adds a sailboat to the game we've got creatures and critters which adds further animals medieval expansion gives us portcullises and drawbridges and things like that meteoric expansion just has some nice meteors falling through the sky we have some american darter fish we've got a cave painting system we've got some ornamental fish like koi and goldfish and things like that we've got the outlaw mod it is the can split of the outlaw mod because currently the original outlaw mod is not updated to 118 yet we have player corpse so that no matter how long it takes to get back to our body our body is still there We've got the ability to put pots on shelves. Primitive survival gives us traps and fishing and a whole lot more. Primitive tools gives us some simple tools for early game progress. A rackable fire starter. We can put our fire starter on a rack. Who would have imagined, given the name? Ranged weapon adds in some things like uh, blowguns and arquebusks and things like that late game. Real shingles, adds more shingles, simple wind direction, makes random wind changes, sticks from fire logs, allows us to turn fire logs into sticks. We have a dungeon generator. Um, we have a village mod, which when it is working is pretty epic. Wildcraft trees adds in new trees. Wildcraft adds in new plants. Wolf taming gives us tameable wolf puppies. And the zoom button allows us to zoom. Holy crap, lots of stuff. Single player, all right, create new world. I'm just gonna click on standard till I get a name up top that I like. The Lockabuzz Kingdom Tales, that works for me. We're gonna customize this world, and this is where we are gonna turn this into an island survival. So game mode survival, standard temperate climate, um, random, Respawn radius, all of that is good. Grace timer, we're going to give ourselves two days before monsters begin to appear. Um, seasons enabled. Player lives. I think I'm going to go ten. Ten player lives. So it's not 
it's hardcore, but it's not hardcore. I guess it's medium core. All right, lung capacity 40 seconds. We're going to up that to 60 seconds. Days per month is going to be 30 days. True winters enabled. Block gravity, yes. Allow underground farming, don't care. Body temperature hardiness to minus 5 degrees. Creature hostility aggressive. Creature strength normal. Player hit points up to 35 since we're limiting our number of lives. Uh, hunger rate normal. Walk speed normal. Food spoilage normal. Everything normal, normal, normal. Tree sapling growth time normal. Normal, 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 normal. And then finally... No temporal stability nonsense. Not even dealing with it. I hate it. We hate it, precious. Um, where is it? Here we go. Land cover. How much percent of the world should be land? The rest is ocean. We're going to go with... Fifty percent land. Land cover scale determines how much ocean will be between pieces of land. Um, meaning that there might be, uh, if this was set to a lower rate, you might have little land bridges connecting things and stuff. We'll leave that at 100%. Um, everything's going to be there except forestation and shrubs. We're going to up that very slightly, somewhat more forest. Uh, surface copper is rare. We're going to change that to uncommon. Surface tin deposits are extremely rare. We're going to change that to rare. Snow melt and accumulation enabled. Land claiming we don't need. An auction house we don't need. Apply. And with that, we're going to create world. No seed. Um, once the world is generated, I will share the seed. Um, so that if you guys want to kind of play along, do the same kind of settings and stuff, you can do so. So the general shtick here is that you are a seraph. Seraphs are angelic beings and due to temporal distortions and things going on we are ending up coming from our elevated spiritual existence to a physical existence and there are other things that are doing so as well and not having so good a time at it and uh, they are referred to as drifters We should be getting close. Okay. That will not do. We're going to go tuba low. So that's going to be your voice. I'm going to set my skin color to something vaguely approaching human. Um, and... We're going to do dreadlocks. I like a top knot. Uh, facial expression. Let's be serious. Uh, mustache seagull. Me. Let's do neat walrus. And for beard, let's do shaggy full. Get a normal color. Underwear is going to be breeches. Confirm our skin. Now, we have uh, several classes available. We have commoners, which basically they have no pluses and no minuses. We have hunters, who uh, get the ability to create a uh, primitive bow and arrow, but they don't do so well in melee, and they don't get as much ore. Um, malefactors, they're kind of hard to pin down. Tenacious survivors that can avoid unwanted attention and find loot that others might have missed. So they get 
10% loot from foraging, plus 20% wild crop drops, uh, plus 15 drop rate, plus 10 rusty gear drop rate. Basically, they're they're good at finding loot is what it comes down to, but they suck at combat. Clockmakers are great at making mechanical things, but they suck at combat. Blackguard, they are your standard tanky warriors, so they're good at fighting, but they're bad at everything else. And then you have tailors who are good at making and repairing clothing and armor, and uh, they suck at combat. So, needless to say, the commoner and the hunter are our two choices. And as to which is going to end up being, I'm going to let fate decide. I'm going to throw a six-sider, and odd will be commoner, even will be hunter. And survey says, I'm going to be a commoner. Ugh, I wanted to be a hunter. But we'll go by the dice. We're going to confirm the class, and immediately we are going to hold the space bar because we're in the water. All right, let's swim to shore. Yeah, I think we'll come to shore here as the closest. doesn't look too bad. It's 1st of May, it's spring. It's 7.8 degrees centigrade with near gale force winds. Well, actually there's a fair amount of land around here. Hello little raccoon. See, I'm not the only one who's taking a swim. Let's hit M for the map. See what we got here. Oh, this is some cool business here. Check it out. <coughs> now, as you can see, we're basically starting at a north-south zero. Let's see if there's anything we can spot on the map, like ruins or anything interesting like that. Hush your raccoon face. Get up and eat with me. We got something going on right here. Where is that? How far away is that? Pretty much due south. Yeah, there's something going on there that the, the background seems odd. I think we'll go that way. Uh, let's see what we got. Loose flint. Heck yeah, right off the bat. Alright, so. Conglomerate rock. Can it be used to make tools? Too soft for stone use. Or for tool use. Which was my concern. Alright. Let's get on up here. What's this? This is mint. Alright. I need to find flint. I need sticks. And I want to know what's going on in that southern area. Got there growing flax. And some new plants from the mods. Got a little bit of ruins right here. And there is a container. It's a seed <coughs> container. Which got us spelt seeds. That's not bad. Now, currently, our only storage that we have available to us is our hot bar down here. Down here on the bottom right, there's places where we can put in an expansions, and then we'll start to get some slots up here. This is our crafting grid. I hit E to open that and close it. Um, this is our left hand where we can put a torch or a shield and things like that. But I definitely am going to need more flint than one stinking piece of flint. Come on. 
give me some flint. There's some. Celery. We will take that because we're gonna need some form of food. There's rhubarb. Okay, so we got a little bit of food, and here we go. This is called tool tool is one of the water plants added by our water plant mod and this is going to make it possible for us to get some things accomplished just as soon as I can get some sticks. Give me some sticks and I give you tool. Okay, so I'm going to get flint in hand, I'm going to hold down shift and right click, and that's going to put that down on the ground. I'm going to choose flint knife blade and use my other piece of flint to break the little yellow bits to nap out a knife blade. There we go, put that up top drop a stick in there and that's going to give me a knife and that's good for us we're going to come over here to the tool and if we use the knife on it it'll break twice the first time it breaks it'll give us the actual tool rushes right? and the second time we break it it would actually give us the root now along with the tool here there is hard sedge and there are also some uh, cattails, what they call Cooper's reeds in the game here. But I'm going to stick primarily to tool. Come on. And by cutting it with the knife it will grow back. So if we end up staying in this area, it'll be a viable source of tool. And this is lunch. This is soft sedge. Come through and cut a bunch of soft sedge. Because it is edible. So there's soft sedge, hard sedge, and brown sedge. And of them, brown sedge is edible, and hard sedge is used for crafting. Alright, so we are going to take the tool. We're going to come up here, and we're going to form it like that. That's going to allow us to make hand baskets. And a hand basket put down here will give us three additional storage slots. That is enough to do three, so we'll need to cut a little more to do it. But this time, instead, I'm going to use hard sedge just to demonstrate that hard sedge can also be used for such purposes. Whereas in the vanilla game, the only thing we have available is papyrus and cattails. go and I'm just gonna toss that away and there we are now we've got some storage let's go ahead and eat our celery and a bit of rhubarb and so we've got food in our belly some expanded storage I need 
more flint. Now I'm going to pick up one conglomerate rock because that way I can use the last piece of flint I have if I need to. But where was that? Where was that odd looking spot? Down here. So slightly that way. I'm just going to work my way over there because it looks interesting. I'm hoping it's a patch of clay. That that's why it looks different. Got tons of tool here. That's great. This is actually not a bad place at all. Um, tons of raw materials. Over on this side we seem to have a good forest. Normally I would build a raft and I would travel a long way looking for all kinds of interesting things, but I may take the time to just set up here and make this our initial location. Just a matter of we need clay. Clay is a very important part of things and I need flint. Moving a bit cautiously, we never know what's going to be in the woods. I really need some flint. That is miner's lettuce. It is also edible. What's cool is having learned a lot of uh, wilderness survival, the plants that they've added in actually are proper edible wild plants. This is alder. Alder, if we harvest it, will give us alder bundles, which are used for making like wicker style fences. But man, the lack of flint is gonna be pretty problematic here. There's finally one. relative to that spot we saw. Limestone. Hey! That makes all the difference in the world. Okay, it looks like we've got some sort of a ruins right there. And then whatever this oddity is here. So, in that direction that direction. But finding limestone, that's brilliant. That gives us the ability to tan hides. Well, now, one of our mods does give us the ability to do brain tanning. I just heard a sheepy. Okay, we're getting close to whatever we got going on here. situation here. Oh, buildings? Ah -ha -ha. We have a village. Just a couple of huts here, it looks like. Good day to you, sir. Don't mind me, I'm just going to come in and invade your home with no notice whatsoever. <coughs> They've got a little garden going there. A little outdoor sitting area. You are a trader, aren't you? Uh -huh. Yes, you are. Haven't seen you around before. What are you up to? Welcome back to Lockabout. What can I do for you? You got anything to trade, Matilda? 
He's trading all the different workstations. Wolf puppies, kittens, and hunting dogs. Interesting. And he's trading for food. All right, well, thank you. I, I will certainly bear that in mind. Having a village right here, that's... That's pretty all right. Let's get a look at the surrounding area. Maybe we'll build right over here by the village. We've got lots of tool out there. You know, if there was if there was clay right here in the neighborhood, I think I could be pretty happy just settling right here and using it as a base for explor exploration. Oh, more flint. Thank you. Because with limestone here... Now this is sandstone here, so the limestone must be back in that other area. We're going to drop a marker on this little village so that we can keep track of where it is. Lots of hard sedge here. And there is Inula, whatever Inula is. That one i got to say I'm unfamiliar with. <coughs> hmm. Alright, first of all, I'm going to right-click say ruins let's just put a X marker there and then village track of things. So that way, that way, what do we got here? 1626. Sun will be going down soon, but I should have time to go look for that little ruins over here. Meteorite exploding in the atmosphere. So the question is, is this the ruins of a building or is it the entrance of a dungeon? like just the, the base of a tower, really. That's too bad. I was hoping it was going to be something a little more interesting than that, and potentially more usable than that. Now you got desert off to the west. Big desert off to the west. Desert off to the east. Well, I think maybe I will settle near Swamp Village, for now at least. But the big thing is locating clay. Right click that, and what we're going to do is we're going to pin that. And that way, it will appear on our mini-map. Hello, village. Pin. Save. There we go. That way, we always know which way it is to get back there. Clay would be wondrous. At least we're starting to find more flint now. 
play would be wondrous if I had some clay. Alright, let's make an axe. We shall do so by getting our flint in our hands, holding the left shift, clicking right mouse, and then choosing an axe head. a stone of any sort in our hand and nap out that axe head. And I am going to cut some alder. Because alder, when we cut it, gives us firewood. Instead of having to take big logs and split them into firewood, this will just drop us a nice collection of firewood as well as some alder bundles. Because the sun she is going down. I'm gonna get some grass. And then I am gonna make a beeline back for the village, because they have beds there. And we'll just spend the night in the village. <coughs> Rabbit, you scared the crap out of me. Uh, something was coming for me. <laughs> we got this little house here, that little house there. Actually, this is a bit more substantial building. What do we have here? There's two beds in here. Yeah, glass windows and everything. Two sticks, put them like so, and put a piece of grass right there, and that's going to create a fire starter. Alright, with grass in my hand, I'm going to start the fire. that by first shift right clicking some grass down and then shift right clicking down four logs. Take my fire starter. Come on. There we go. Now that that is lit, I'm going to take a stick. I'm going to add dry grass to the top of it and that's going to create an unlit torch. I'm going to light that off the fire. There we go. I've got nothing to cook but now at least I can see. Greetings friends, I bring fire. solid face. There is something invisible here. What on earth? I don't know what I'm looking at. Okay, what 
whatever it is. I got it out of there. Uh huh. Waiting for about 2,200 hours. So we didn't actually pick anything up from breaking that. Yeah, no idea what the deal was there. Hmm. anything that looks vaguely like clay out there because that's really the big one is gotta get clay but I mean it's absolutely beautiful to have a start like this that looks like some sort of ruins there maybe and not sure what that is But, yeah, it's very cool to have found a village immediately from the village mod. And now understanding kind of what we're looking for, that might be a village right there as well. We'll have to go and see. But, alrighty. Well, it's about 2100 hours. It should be late enough to sleep through till morning. I'm just going to sleep in this bed right here.